I'm just about ready to resin. I'm all set up. I'm not gonna film myself doing the resin though because I don't wanna be filming the entire time and once I start touching the resin, I can't touch my camera because the hardener, if it gets in anything, it'll literally harden it all. So, just wish me luck and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, it's um, the next day after I've done resin, the next morning. They're still not hard cured, but they're dry. They're just like a bit sticky. Take them out and then we're gonna talk about what went right and what went wrong. Covered it with an empty litter box. The one that came out the best is Horseshit. It's the one that has, I think it only has one bubble and a little bit of dust in it. It's pretty smooth and even. This one was the first one I did and I just did a second coat on it and it's not too, too bad. It just didn't look great to begin with so the second layer didn't, it just sort of smoothed it out. Tender Overnight Success looks great. Okay, but here's a main problem that I'm having which is that the uh, resin is soaking into my paper. Now maybe that's not something you can tell and that's why I still like this one is because like it still looks okay, but you can see, see in the letters how there's like the dark spots and how it looks kind of wet. That's because I didn't seal the letters enough. I did use Mod Podge to seal it, but I think that I even have to seal the letters before I glue them on and then seal them once they're on. If you guys have any suggestions with how to better seal the paper before I apply resin, please let me know. It's really hard to find resources online for this. Because art resin is like, oh, if you use quality enough paper, mm-mm, that's false. That's not true. Because it's not like sitting on top all the way. I've cut out letters. So it has an opportunity to get inside, underneath. And so that's what's happening. I'm sealing the top, but I'm not getting the sides. And then it's even getting underneath, I think. And that's what's creating the wet marks. This one also bubbled a lot. And I think what happens when it bubbles a lot is that it's the way I stirred it. Because like the bubbles are only supposed to happen for about an hour after you resin. The bubbles were still going on like three hours. And then like three hours after it starts getting like I didn't, like it starts getting too tacky to pop the bubbles. So this one has a few bubbles. I don't mind the way the bubbles look in this one. Like I still really like it, um, you know, but there is some dust in here. It's like, it, it's an imperfect resin, that's for sure. This one is just thin. It just has like a really thin layer. So you can sort of see some of the letters poking up through. And also soaked into this one a bit, but it's not super noticeable. And there is like a major cat hair in here, which you're not gonna be able to see on camera, but it's like right there. <laughs> and like, again, this like pieces of dust and stuff, like it's just sort of unfortunate. This one's pretty hard actually. This is probably something where I could just sand it and do another layer and I might actually try that with this. Last one is a, is a write-off. I don't even like the design myself, um, just because I think it's hard to read. Um, so I'm not, oh, I fucked up the sides too. So like when it drips, I use a popsicle stick to like, I'm almost thinking I should just resin the sides. I didn't want to, but I think it just might be best. You can see it's like an uneven layer up here because I just took like a popsicle stick or the palette knife and like, I'm not really sure what the solution for that is. Again, if you guys know, let me know. But this one, like the letters look terrible. Like you can tell they look wet. Like, it's not like this one where it's like, meh, you can tell, but it still looks pretty good. No, this one looks like hell. Here's what I've decided to do. The learning curve, or the fuck ups, or I had to make this to get to something good. This is gonna be 
a little gallery that I keep behind my door. Pieces that didn't really work out, that I don't really like, come on, focus for God's sake, of pieces that didn't really work out, and then underneath I write why, the date, and then it's just like they get a place here. I was thinking last night about how unfortunate it is that when you resin something and it doesn't work out, it's like a wasted piece of art, basically. Because like, what else? What else can I really do with it? You know, when there's canvas and I fuck it up, then it just goes back into the pile of like, I'll paint over this. <clears throat> you know, with drawings, they can just get kind of stuck away or thrown away. Um, though I don't really encourage you to throw away your artwork. And I think <laughs> thinking about that, like I wouldn't want to throw these away because they were something that I made that was like important to make. Right, like this is my motto. And it doesn't mean literally like make bad art, like don't purposely, I mean make, yeah sure, make shitty art if you want. It's more to say like, don't be afraid to make bad art. Don't be afraid to make shitty art. Because like, you're gonna make bad stuff before you make good stuff. Or you're gonna make like mediocre stuff before you make good stuff. This is like, not great. I mean, I really love like the letters and like it looks cool, but like the resin fucked everything up and so it just doesn't look as nice, right? But it's gonna go in the gallery now. It's gonna be, this is part of the learning curve. I have to make this before I make another one like this that's like really good, right? So I just thought like, why don't I just find a place for these to honor them? For one, for storage, but then another to like, oh. Good morning. Hi, good to see you. <laughs> but another not only for storage, but another just to have, like, to remind myself that it's okay to make stuff that isn't gonna be good. Like, it's gonna take maybe a few other tries doing this before I start making good stuff. In the meantime, they get to be a part of something that's still kind of cool. They still get to be a part of, like, this little thing behind my, and I put it behind my door so I don't have to look at it all the time, and so it doesn't have to be on camera all the time, but just something I can visit and be like, when I do start making good stuff, I can look back and be like, wow, this is where I started and now this is where I am.